he did it again. President Obama, who knew for three years that Americans, even if they liked their health care plan, would not be able to keep it, continued to lie, saying that they could. And he just did it again. And although he claims he truly believed that Americans could keep their health care plans, he now admits he was inaccurate. So why was he inaccurate? Why can't we keep our health care plans if we like them? Why? Because Mr. Transparency himself changed the fine print and made believe he didn't know anything about it. Kind of reminds me of a used car salesman. We here at Creasel Used Cars aren't lying, we aren't kidding, we're telling the truth when we say we have used cars in A1 condition, A2, A3. We have used cars. He changed the rules so that we could not keep our health care plans. Shock, he lied again. He lied about that awful video in Benghazi. He lied about getting to the truth about the IRS. And he lied to us about what most of us consider sacred, our family's health. Now, how do I know this? I know it because his own Justice Department and legal papers filed in federal court admitted that most health plans would lose their grandfather's status by the end of 2013. So, Mr. President, we finally know where you draw the line on lies. Lie to the American people? No problem. Lie to Congress? No problem. Lie to an oversight committee? Not a problem. But even you know not to lie to a federal judge in federal court. And mind you, it's not only the 5%, as you say, who have their own plans that you now admit will lose coverage, but all of us, including well over 100 million American workers who get coverage through their employers who will lose their grandfather protection status. Except, of course, you, Mr. President, your staff, Congress, their staff, and those union friends of yours. But you say that we should welcome the new mandate, that it will bring better health care and lower premiums to us. Now, how could that possibly be? There is no way that these plans can be cheaper. Why? Because they have to include stuff that we don't need. Now, I'm guessing if you're a senior citizen, you probably do not need pediatric dental care. False teeth, maybe, but not pediatric dental care. And I'm guessing that if you're a gay man, you probably don't need labor room and delivery benefits. And if you're a postmenopausal woman, I'm guessing you probably don't need maternity benefits. Maybe a few fans or air conditioners, but not maternity benefits. And the depths that you, Mr. President, went through to perpetuate this lie is only outdone by the ineptitude of your administration to even make good on your signature legislation. Now, what do I mean by that? How do you spend more than $600 million on a website that doesn't work? Why do you hire a Canadian company that even Canada fired with a French name that nobody can pronounce through a no-bid contract? Why would you even go out of the United States, the home of Amazon and Google, and hire a foreign company? And this week, we find out that your own FBI has been investigating one of your website contractors for fraud. The same contractor repeatedly written up in trade journals and exposés for lowballing bids to win contracts, only to have the final cost balloon exponentially. But I'll bet you're going to get to the bottom of this and you're going to hold people accountable. But why would I believe that since you permitted navigators with criminal convictions to gather our personal, private information to put on a website that doesn't work? Why would you do this? Why lie about something that you know will ultimately be exposed as blatantly untrue? Why lie about a video in Benghazi? Why lie about your IRS targeting your political opponents? Why? So that you, Mr. President, can win an election.
This week, an ABC Washington Post poll found that had the health care lie been exposed before November 2012, Romney would have won the election 49% to 45%. And Benghazi? Of course, she had to say it was a video. If you admitted that you knew Al Qaeda had killed four Americans, then I guess your Osama bin Laden narrative wouldn't have been so compelling. And if the IRS hadn't targeted your political enemies uh, during your election, which, by the way, was pretty close, we might also have had a completely different result. So now that you've been forced to admit the lie, even your own party is panicked. They are scared. The sycophants who touted your health care bill, including Senator Mary Landrow, Congressman Nick Rahal, they're jumping ship. What to do going forward? Now, yesterday you gave us an extra month next year to sign up for Obamacare. You say it's good news for consumers because we'll have more time to learn about the plans before enrolling. You know, my dad, rest in peace, always told me there are two reasons for doing things. A good reason and the real reason. The real reason? The one month would move the start of the 2015 enrollment and the inevitable increase in premiums to after the 2014 midterm elections. Now, isn't that special? Mr. President, with all due respect, you have done nothing but pull the wool over Americans' eyes in your relentless pursuit of power. Whether it was a nuclear option this week in the Senate or trying to convince the American public that we couldn't have saved those four Americans that we now know were begging for help in Benghazi. You came into office claiming you would give the American people the most transparent administration in history. That's one of the few things that maybe you didn't lie about. Except the transparency is about you. You are the one who's transparent. And Americans now see right through your lies.